This video is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at itpro.tv. So when we take a look at the idea of the ether channel then and, and the two different types of port aggregation that we can do, there's two varieties. Well, as we mentioned here, there's a proprietary version and then there's open standard, is that what we call it? Open standard version? Uh, it is an open standard, okay. yeah. So one is called LACP, that's the way we normally refer to it, link mm -hmm. aggregation control, control protocol. protocol. And the other one is PAGP or PAGP. Uh, when we do that, and that one is the port aggregation protocol. Yeah, let me uh, write these out that. because I, I forget yeah. them myself, right? So, uh, link aggregation protocol, uh, link aggregation and control yeah. protocol, uh, that is an open standard, yep. right? And then PAGP, and yep. the, the G is lowercase because it's not really yeah, it's a port uh, aggregation. Yep. For AG for aggregation for us. And it is a Cisco proprietary. Yeah. Uh, it's not really a standard or anything. Uh, and then there's just like raw ether channel, which yeah. is the really old Cisco standard that, that nobody mm -hmm. really does anymore. But the term ether channel today is used kind of to encompass both of these. Yeah. And so when we set this up, we really just have to pick, mm -hmm. do you want to do the open standard or do you want to do Cisco proprietary? And there's not really any benefit anymore to the Cisco proprietary mm -hmm. when there used to be, but, but LACP is very powerful now and it's pretty much the, the only one that I use. Yeah. Now, we might be saying, well, why, why would I do that? It's because you may be connecting to well, other switches. So learning this one is probably the one that we're going to see. Now, the, the strange thing about the configuration uh, in this is that the configurations are not really that different mm -hmm. uh, until we get to some keywords. And so we'll, we'll see that when we get into that. Yeah, when you configure link aggregation, when you, when you configure either of these, it's a lot like dynamic trunking right. protocol, right? So remember with dynamic trunking protocol, we said like uh, switch port, trunk, mode, auto or desirable or mm -hmm. you know in each of those terms determine whether we would try and build a trunk mm -hmm. or we would only build a trunk if somebody else asked us and and so on mm -hmm. that's how these are mm -hmm. we have to define whether or not we we want to become a trunk or, or not and so let's yeah. let's take a look at those so the first thing i need to do is i need to take a look at my switch port configuration so i'm going to say um, let's start with port 13. So if I look at port 13 right now, I've got it mm -hmm. set switch port mode, dynamic, desirable. Uh, this is a, a 3550, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of its its default. And and 14 is set the same way. Mm -hmm. So so these guys, they're just set right now where they do dynamic trunking. Mm -hmm. They are both set the same. Uh, you know, I can configure them however we need, but I'll just start with um, with port 13. All right. First off, I want to make sure that this guy is a trunk. Mm -hmm. I always want it to trunk. So I'm going to say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q switch port mode trunk and switch port no negotiate all right so just issuing a couple of commands there to force this mm -hmm. port into into trunking now you do not have to trunk to do ether channel right. you can do ether channel with access mode ports also but we don't normally. Yeah. Normally you do it with a trunk because that's where you really need the bandwidth. Yeah. You know, The fact that a single PC only has a 100 megabit connection, yeah. that's not a big deal. But when your trunk between switches only has a 100 megabit, that's yeah. a bottleneck. So it is normally a trunk that we're working with. And, uh, and if I take a look at that interface, so now it's basically just hard set as mm -hmm. a trunk. Okay. And if I want to bond in port 14, I probably need to make sure that port 14 has the same configuration. Right. So normally we'll use the range command so that we make sure that we're applying the same commands to each interface, but I'll, I'll do it separate here just so we can actually see it right there. Okay, next I need to set up my bond. So I'm gonna bond these two together mm -hmm. and we do that with the, uh, uh, channel. With the channel group yep. command. There we go, thank you, Ronnie. Channel groups are just clusters of connections, mm -hmm. right? And, and different switches have different support for how many channel groups they mm -hmm. can support. I've seen some that support as few as four, yeah. and I've seen others that support hundreds. Mm. This particular switch supports 64. Mm -hmm. So I'll just call this channel group one, and then I say mode, and here's yep. the term that's gonna really make the difference, right. that's going to define which one we use, all right? And if you look at these, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add these to the notes, right? Because uh, it's, it's something that's handy to have. So basically what we're doing is we're coming in here and saying uh, channel-group and a number, mm -hmm. mode, 
And then what we specify next is what's going to determine what we're doing. And, uh, uh, and if we take a look at these, like active and auto and so on, uh, each one pertains to a slightly different configuration. And let me, let me just divide these up into a, a more logical sense. So <laughs> let's start with LACP since yeah. it's the most common, all right? So with LACP, if you want to configure it, there's really two commands. The first one is channel group and a number mm -hmm. mode active. All right. Active says this port will run LACP no matter what. No matter right. what, we're going to run the link aggregation and control protocol. Mm -hmm. If we say passive, that says if the other side asks us, we'll go ahead and do LACP. But if they don't ask, mm -hmm. we're just going to be a normal port. We're not going to do any bonding whatsoever. Yep. And then there's the PAGP that we have as well. And in those, notice that the two different commands here. The one, of course, that actually is set to the desirable is the same way. It is saying, I am going to use PAGP. And then if you set the other side to auto, it's going to say, only if the other side is using that are we going to do this. Make sure you pay attention in the syntax here. If they ask you to set LACP, make sure you pay attention to the keywords active and passive. If they say set PAGP, Pay attention to the keywords auto and desirable. It's going to make a difference uh, when we take a look at that. Yep. Oh. So uh, hey, yeah. a little bit of nice. uh, ASCII I like art, it. I suppose. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so basically that, that word is what determines that mm -hmm. difference. And, and if you're going LACP versus PACP, now I've said it in other episodes, mm -hmm. I hate dynamic <laughs> stuff. I always statically assign things. Yeah. And so for me, since I usually do LACP, yeah. this is the only command I really need in production right, right. here. Mode active, that's going to make it do LACP, and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted auto detect, you could with the passive commands, or if you were doing mm -hmm. PAGP. Auto, you know, would do that detection. Desirable would would force it on, and and that's a little bit different than than like with uh, trunking, because mm -hmm. with trunking, if you set DTP to auto, right. it's going to try and trunk, but if the trunk fails, what does it do? Falls back to access. Yeah. With PAGP, you set it to auto, it's going to try and aggregate, and if it fails, yeah. it's still going to aggregate. Yeah. You know, forget you, it's still going to do it. So. <laughs> So a little bit different than trunking, yeah. but now but, we haven't uh, mentioned that first one that you actually have up there, Don. That's mm -hmm. the the old one that you were talking about, right? That's the old one. It does raw bonding. It's not very efficient. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do the greatest load balancing in the world. Yeah. But there's support for backwards yeah. compatibility if you have old equipment. And by old, the first time I configured raw ether channel was in 1999. <laughs> you know, it was 14 years ago, yeah. and or 15 years ago. I don't know. It was a long time <laughs> ago. Uh, so it's been around a long time, yeah. and it, it's not the way that you want to go. But support is still there. You just say channel dash group and a number mode on, yeah. and that'll flip it on without any of the additive features that you get in LACP and PAGP, yeah. which are much better at handling ports coming in and coming out of the bond on the fly. Yeah, now if you're new to this configuration, one of the things that can kind of get you on the syntax side is by accidentally doing something like channel group one mode active on. They're yeah. not. They're not uh, com combinable. I'm, I'm not a compatible, compatible or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, they're not compatible. So don't mix the two up. Don't add the two together. Very easy to see and go. Oh yeah, I want to turn it on, and think that that's the proper configuration here. But remember the, this. This is actually good for us to to make sure that we keep distinct and clear. They're not again compatible on this sense here. Nor can we switch them. On one side, I don't want to do the idea of mode active, and on the other side, the mode auto. It doesn't work that way either.